He's he about to start right now. Right about to Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. So we continue our, our sittings and our lessons connected to the structure of, of the Muslim family. And the topic at hand at the moment, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, is the topic of maintaining a wife. The topic at hand at the moment is, is maintaining, maintaining a wife. And for those who, those who have the book, then flip to page number 83, as that topic is contained in the, in the appendix. We turn to page number 83, is where we find this particular topic. And this portion is taken from al malakhis al-Fiqhi by al-Allama al-Sheikh Saleh ibn Fawzan al-Fawzan, hafizahullah ta'ala. And it's summarized from that particular book. So a person who wants to read in more detail, then they can go back to the original version. Shaykh Fawzan Hafidhullah Ta'ala, he mentions a nafaqat is the plural of nafaqa. Right? So the word in Arabic is nafaqa, which means which means to spin. A darahim or other forms of money. And that's what's meant by this particular topic. What's meant by this particular topic is how does a man or what are the rulings connected to a man? Maintaining his, maintaining his wife, and no doubt it's obligatory. Today, inshallah ta'ala, we'll look at it from this particular book, and then tomorrow, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, we'll look at it, some hadith of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, connected to this particular topic. But Shaykh Fawzan, he mentions that Islamically, it means to adequately, to adequately, and that, that word should be underlined or written down, to adequately provide food, clothing, accommodation, and related things for those under one's care. So in reality, we'll discuss the topic of maintaining a wife, but likewise falling under that is maintaining one's children, his sons, his daughters, and likewise maintaining any pets that a person may have or animals that a person may have. All of that comes under nafaqat. Whoever or whatever a person is responsible for then they have to maintain it. And it's a huge responsibility, as we'll see. A huge responsibility. So before a person steps out into the realm of marriage, they need to evaluate. They need to evaluate and ponder the huge responsibility of taking care of a family. So Sheikh Fawzan, he mentions, firstly, it is an obligation upon a person to maintain his wife. Right? And we'll discuss this particular issue. Likewise, it's upon a person to maintain themselves. They maintain themselves first and foremost. They maintain themselves first and foremost. Then right next in line is the wife. Right next in line is the wife. And that's for a number of reasons. Two of them being is that the wife, she's bound to you. She's fastened securely to you. That's your wife. And what's meant by that she's securely fastened to you is that it can be challenging for a woman to remove herself from a marriage or to get out of a marriage. It can be challenging at times. If the brother just doesn't want to release her. It may be, it may be that she has to call here and there and get this person involved and that person involved and she's trying to get out of the marriage. So while she's in that situation on top of that, she's not going to be taken care of? That's, 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 that's a problem. It's a problem. So the wife, as Sheikh Fawzan mentions, he mentions, firstly, it's a, it's, it is obligatory upon a person to maintain his wife. The second reason being that the wife is maintained is because the husband finds pleasure in her. The second reason that the wife, her status is so important and that she has to be maintained is because the husband finds pleasure in her. 
So that would necessitate that would necessitate that he takes care of her. So he finds his pleasure in her, he finds comfort, he finds a clean home, he finds his children well groomed, he finds intimacy. He finds all of these things with his wife and she's not going to be taken care of. No doubt she deserves to be taken care of. From two angles like we mentioned, that she's with her husband, she's tightly fastened to her husband, meaning that it's difficult for a woman to get out of a marriage. And secondly, that man finds pleasure in her, so she deserves to be taken care of. So firstly, it's obligatory upon a person to maintain his wife, so it is binding upon the husband. And notice we keep finding those words, obligatory. The next sentence we find binding. It's a serious responsibility. It's binding upon the husband to provide his wife with food, clothing, and accommodation, meaning somewhere to live, all of which should be suitable for someone of her stature. And that's important. That's, a person has to have, you have to have insight when you choose the sister. You have to have insight when you choose the sister because she's going to have a certain stat, meaning she's used to certain things. That's what's meant by that. When you marry a woman, ponder what she's used to because it could be an issue down the road. If she's used to something and you don't provide her that, that could be an issue down the road. So as Sheikh Fozan mentions, and we'll read over and over and again, that the spending and the maintaining of a wife should be suitable for someone of her stature, meaning what her stature is, where she's from, what she's used to, how her parents raised her, where she grew up. All of that comes into consideration when you, when you have to take care of a woman. Allah the Most High, he said, لِيُنْفِقْ ذُو سَعَةٍ مِنْ سَعَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he states, let the rich man spend according to his, according to his means. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he states, and this is a very important verse. The verse that we're about to mention, we're speaking about the topic of maintaining a wife, but is comprehensive, is very comprehensive. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he states, وَلَهُنَّ مِثْلُ الَّذِي عَلَيْهِنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he states, and the women have rights just like the men have rights. And the women, they have rights just like the men have rights. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, you are responsible for providing them or providing for them with adequate food and clothing. And notice the key word that keeps being mentioned is adequate. Not that you just give her any old thing. Not that you just give her any old thing that she might, might not be used to. And that's a decrease in her standard of living. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah he mentions about this particular verse in that women have rights just as men have rights according to that which is reasonable we find that in a verse as well according to that which is which is reasonable meaning what she's used to Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah he mentions it is a proof to affirm all the rights that a woman has and all the rights that are upon her And a side note, when a person ponders, right? some people say that women are oppressed in Islam and things of that nature, but any man that ponders, any man that ponders and any man that is taking care of his responsibilities, he will clearly see in Islamic legislation that women are protected. Women are protected at a high level in Islam from them having a guardian, 
to them having to be maintained, to even when they're in the idda, they have to be maintained. If they're divorced and they're pregnant, they have to be maintained. They cannot be put out the home when they're, when they're placed in idda. They have to, they're allowed to have their place to live. Women are very protected. When a man, pond, when I'm talking about when a man is pondering and implementing all of the legislation of Islam, they see, subhanAllah, th this woman is protected. But the issue comes in where her rights are not fulfilled. So it can come off as if she's being oppressed. But if we as men fulfill their rights, we will see for sure and we will perceive for sure that Islam protects women. And raises them to a high status to the point where a woman doesn't have to work. A woman does not have to work. Our families can come in tonight and say, you know, I don't, don't want to work anymore. And you have no right to push her out the door to do so. You have no right to push her out the door to do so. And she can stay home. And she can be protected. And she doesn't have to go out into the, into the, into the streets. And she can stay in the house if she wants to. And raise her children. And other than that from the rulings of Islam. And our women need to understand that as well. They need to understand and not be influenced by outside sources and understand and learn Islam and ponder Islam and see how Islam has raised the status of women tremendously. More than any other woman on this planet. So they should never think otherwise. Sheikh Fozant, he mentions some rulings connected to, to maintaining, to maintaining a, a wife. And he mentions that when there is a dispute between the two spouses, the judge sets the amount of maintenance to be received by the wife, taking into consideration the wealth or poorness of the two spouses, or the wealth of one of them and the poorness of the, of the other. One, thing, one of the things that we need to understand um, when we read books about marriage and, and custody and things of that nature, a lot of the things that we're reading, they're connected to times of dispute. Understand what I'm saying? A lot of the rulings that we're reading, or when we read, they're connected to times of dispute. Why am I saying that? Because the premise is that husband and wife can solve things amicably. That husband and wife can solve things amicably. And it doesn't have to be that someone gets involved and a ruling is mentioned per se. For example, children. There are certain rulings connected to, connected to the children. If the woman marries, the child goes with the father, and things of that nature. But amicably, they can say, okay, the child is going to stay home. And that will be fine. Because a lot of the rulings that are connected to marriage are connected to a person's right, a person's rights. And a person can either enforce their rights or relinquish their rights. So what we're reading right here, I'm saying that because what we're reading right here is that when there's a dispute between the spouses, the judge sets an amount of maintenance to be received. Meaning that's after a dispute, but the spouses, they can sit down amongst themselves and solve the situation amicably before someone else gets involved and sets an amount. But that's in a lot of chapters connected to, to marriage and divorce. Try to solve things amicably. If there's an issue, just try to solve things amicably between you and your spouse. Sheikh Fozani mentions certain scenarios. He mentions certain scenarios connected to maintenance. That therefore, a wealthy woman married to a wealthy man is allocated an amount of maintenance that is suitable for her. Meaning she's a wealthy woman. She's married to a, a wealthy man, and she should be taken care of in a wealthy, a wealthy fashion, because that's what she's used to. He has the ability to do so. The point being is that what's being mentioned right here are situations between husbands and wives. What is the financial situation of both of the people? That's what's being spoken about right here. So the first scenario that's being mentioned is a wealthy man and a wealthy woman. She's taken care of in a wealthy fashion. 
so she should eat in the same fashion that a woman married to a wealthy man in her land would eat. She should be provided with clothing similar to that which is worn by the other wealthy women in her land. And she should be given furniture, furniture and household items that are befitting to someone like her in the place where she resides. A poor woman married to a poor man is allocated clothing and furniture that is suitable for someone of her standing in that land. So if both of them do not have a lot of wealth, it's not for her to be taken care of in the fashion that a wealthy family would take care of, that a wealthy man would take care of a wealthy woman, but rather the situation of both people are taken into consideration. A middle class married or a middle class woman married to a middle class man, I mean working people, working folk. That a middle class woman married to a middle class man, that's the first scenario. Or a rich woman, first class, first situation, middle class, middle class. That's both of their situations. The second scenario is a rich woman, but she's married to a poor man. The second scenario, she's a rich woman, but she's married to a poor man. She comes from money. But she's married to a poor man. Or a poor woman married to a rich man. Because that could be a tricky situation. She doesn't come from money, but now she's married to someone who's rich. In all of those scenarios, she lives a middle class, that's a middle class lifestyle. And the one that might be tricky is the the, rich, the poor woman who marries a rich man, now she believes that she's going to live what? A rich lifestyle. No, that's not the case. You didn't come from being rich. But if you want, again, things can be solved what? Amicably. If you want to li give her a rich li lifestyle, to father, go ahead. But if it reaches the level of dispute and argumentation and it comes before someone and now we're talking about maintenance, no, you weren't rich, so you don't get a rich lifestyle, you get a middle class lifestyle. He's rich, you're poor, he, he's rich, you're poor, you get a middle class lifestyle. But again, that's, that's a, a scenario where I'm saying that things can be solved amicably. If he wants to, treat, if he wants to you know, enhance her lifestyle, then he's, he's welcome to do that. But if she makes a case and says, well, he's not spending on me. And in the back of her mind, she means being spent on like she's what? Rich, we say, no, that's not the scenario. That's not the situation. You didn't come from that. So maintenance, and that's a scenario that, you know, you, that, that's a scenario that arises. A woman would say, my husband is not spending on me. So now there's going to have to be a, a, a resolution. Okay, well, how much is he going to spend? What's your maintenance? That's a sit-down question. What's your maintenance? People say that. So it has to, you have to sit down and figure out, okay, where does she come from? What kind of job does he have? What kind of, where, what's, what's the whole situation? And we figure out what's a reasonable maintenance. It is the responsibility of the husband, it's the responsibility of the husband to supply provisions for his wife's personal hygiene. That's on the husband. To provide the things for her personal hygiene, such as oils and soap and water, water to drink and to cleanse herself. All that is on the husband. And every woman has her things that she uses for her hygiene and her personal beauty. That's on the husband. To maintain his wife. And when we ponder, we go back to what we said in the very beginning. Who's going to benefit from that beautification? The husband. The husband's going to be the one to benefit from that beautification. Sheikh Fozani mentions all of the above rulings are applicable if the wife has not been divorced. If he has divorced her and she is in Idda, the following rulings apply. Situation that we were just talking about were a married couple. Married couple, that's what we were speaking about. But a woman might be divorced. 
And divorce, that's a blanket statement. She might be divorced, but what's going on with the divorce? The first divorce, second divorce, last divorce, what's going on? She's pregnant. If it's the first or second divorce, if it's the first or second divorce, and the husband still has a choice to take his wife back, pay attention. The first or second divorce and he has the right to take her back, then it's obligatory upon him, her, upon him to maintain her throughout the idda. Person may say, why? Because she is still his, his what? His wife. The first divorce, can you take her back? Take her back. Second divorce, can you take her back? Take her back. So technically speaking, she's still his what? Wife. If she's still his wife, then he still has to do what? Maintain. And again, that's what I'm saying. When you ponder the legislation of Islam, women are protected. They're protected. And a, a word to our sisters, you have, to, you have to learn certain rulings so that you can equip yourself to articulate yourself, to articulate the rights that, that are for you. Just as men learn, women have to learn. It's a protection for you. Knowledge is a weapon. It's a weapon for, them, for men and women. So someone comes with something that doesn't make any sense or doesn't sound right, you say, no, 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 that's not what Allah said. That's not what the messenger of Allah said. That's not the ruling on that particular issue. So just as men have to learn, our sisters have to learn as well as a protection for yourself at times. So when a woman is in idda, it's upon us to continue to take care of her because in reality she is still your wife. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he states, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he states, and their husbands have a better right to take them back in that period, meaning the idda. And we discussed something this morning that likewise is a mistake during the idda period, is that no one should be leaving the home. No one should be leaving the home. We're not, we're not talking about violent situations and things that nature. It's not what we're talking about. We're talking about, you know, normal divorce. No one should be leaving the home. The spouse should be in the house during that. And the man should still be taking care of her. The woman should not leave as well because women get up and leave too. You can't, you can't do that. That's still your husband and he still deserves his rights. Just as you will receive your rights. And Shaykh Abdullah Bassam rahimahullah, he mentioned that a lot of times marriages fail because people aren't handling their rights. And that's why the marriage fails. So we have to be diligent, both men and women, in carrying out the rights that we're supposed to give to our spouses. As for the woman, who was divorced for the third time. And we mentioned that again. We mentioned that this morning. We'll mention it again just as a reminder. Be careful with divorcing your wife. A mistake that people make is they believe that the idda is what causes the divorce to be counted, meaning that the idda is completed. Then they say that this is one divorce. That's not, that's not, how, that's not how the divorce is counted. When it's said, that counts. If you say it, you say you're divorced, and you change your mind in 25 minutes, that is one divorce. All you've done is taken her out of idda. And that's one divorce. The next day, you decide to say it again, and you take her back in 45 minutes. How many divorces now? Two. 
Many people believe that when the idda goes through, that she has those three menstrual cycles. Now it counts as one. No, it counts as one from the moment you set it out your mouth. So you got to be careful. And as we always mention, that third divorce is serious. We mention it over and over and over again. That third divorce is serious because you need to understand that now she has to go be intimate with another man. The woman that you love, the mother of your children, that is the process that has to happen. And coupled with that, he will have to let her go. He may not want to let her go. So divorce is a very, be, be, be very, be very wise. And a lot of times you don't have to say divorce. You don't have to say it. You don't have to say it. Just take a break. Just don't talk to each other for a little while. Maybe go out for the day. You don't have to say divorce right then and there. You don't have to say it. No one is forcing you to say your divorce to your wife. Whatever you're going to try in the end, perhaps try it before even saying before even saying a divorce. Work on the marriage while in the marriage. This is what I'm saying. Work on the marriage while in the marriage. You don't have to work on the marriage in Idda. Whatever you're going to wind up doing in Idda, you can simply do it while you're still married. As for the woman who was divorced for the third time, or is the first or the second divorce, but she has completed the prescribed waiting period, then there's no maintenance for them based on a hadith reported by Bukhari and Muslim. Meaning it's the third divorce, he divorced her the third time, there's no maintenance for her after that third divorce. Likewise, when her idda is over, when her idda is over, she should not expect anything from her husband. We're not talking about a woman that's, that's pregnant, we're talking about a woman who's not pregnant. After the idda is over, she should not be expecting anything from her ex-husband. We're not talking about children being involved. That's a whole, listen to what I'm saying, that's a whole other topic. We're talking about two, we're talking about two people that say that they're a clear example, they don't have any children together. They're just two people, got married, they don't have any children together, divorce happened, idda went through, marriage is totally over. She shouldn't expect anything from her ex-husband. Why am I saying that? Because in, in some situations, in some cultures or laws, a woman might try to get money from her husband after the divorce. A Muslim woman doesn't have a right to do that to her ex-husband. I believe it's called alimony, if I'm not mistaken. It's not for a woman to go after her ex-husband's money. No, the it is over. You don't have a right to a penny of his. And again, what's the example? There, what's not involved? Children. We're not talking about children right now. We're talking about two people who had a clean break. There should be no initiatives put in place in order to get a penny from that ex-husband or force a penny out of that ex-husband. Due to the hadith that's found in Bukhari and Muslim, of Fatima bin Qais, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to her when her husband had divorced her for the third time, there is no maintenance or accommodation for you. Al-Alama Ibn Qayyim said in his book Zad Al-Ma'ad, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an 
أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله هيا على الصلاة هيا على الصلاة هيا على الفلاح هيا على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا Sheikh Fawzan Hafizahullah, he mentions the statement of Al Alama ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah, where he said the divorced woman who has been divorced for the third time or less than that, but she has finished observing her prescribed waiting period, has no right to maintenance or accommodation as proven by the authentic Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi. وسلم, and in accordance to the book of Allah. This is also proven by analogy, and this is the position of the, of the scholars. And for those who have the book, um, if we go back to page number 185, um, F1, page number 85, we could put a one, because these are scenarios. We could put a number one where it says if this is the first or second divorce. Put a one right there, that's the first scenario. As for the second scenario, then it says, as for the woman who was divorced for the third time. That's the second scenario. In the bottom of page 86, that's the third scenario where we are now. However, if the woman who has been divorced for the third time, or less than that, but she has observed the prescribed waiting period is pregnant, then she has the right to maintenance based on the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa in kunna. If it's the third divorce, however she is, she's pregnant. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, and if they are pregnant, then spend on them till they deliver. And if they are pregnant, then spend on them till, till they deliver. In his statement, Allah, in the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa eskinuhun min haythu sakentum min wujdikum. The statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, enlarge them, enlarge them in the divorced women where you dwell according to your means. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to Fatima bin Qais, you have no right to maintenance unless you are pregnant. You know, with that third divorce, you have no right to maintenance unless you are, unless you are pregnant. Put a star next to this. Sheikh Fozan, he mentions that this is because the child being carried by the mother belongs to the man who has pronounced the divorce. This is because the child being carried by the mother belongs to the man who has pronounced divorce. For this reason, it is required for him to support the child and this is not possible unless he spends on the child's mother. For this reason, it is required of him to support the child, and this is not possible unless he spends upon the child's mother. Al Muwaffaq, meaning Ibn Qudama, Rahimahullah, and others have said the people of knowledge are in total agreement about this, but the scholars have differed. Right, a person wants to read, read further, but the scholars have differed over whether this maintenance is the right of the child or the right of the woman who was pregnant.
what's important is that the child needs to be what? Taken care of. And when we ponder while taking care of the child, then the mother by necessity is going to enter into those things. The child needs somewhere to wear, live. The child needs to be nourished. Who's going to eat the food? So by default, right, the child needs heat. The child needs water. The child needs an abundance of things. So the woman is going to, the wife is going to benefit by what? By default. This influences many rulings depending upon which of the two positions is taken as documented in the books of fiqh and fiqh principles. Sheikh Fauzan, he mentions, the wife can lose the right to maintenance for numerous reasons. Because as men, we've been mentioning throughout this lesson that we have to maintain our wives and take care of our wives. But are there scenarios where a wife can lose her maintenance? We put a number one to the next to the first scenario where she can lose her maintenance. When he has no access to her, she loses her right to maintenance because he has lost the opportunity to have pleasurable relations and maintenance is only obligatory when this option is available. Meaning she has no access to her, he has no access to her that she decides to leave the house and not come home. She decides to go somewhere and she had, did not have his permission. He's lost access to his wife. What is he giving her maintenance for? Just because? Number two. When she is disobedient to him, she loses her right to maintenance. And if we notice, we notice how just Islamic legislation is. It doesn't put a man in a bind either. That his wife is talking to him any type way, doing anything that she wants to do, not listening, being disrespectful, demeaning him. Islam protects men as well. You don't have to give her anything. Islam is just, and it protects everyone. So when she is disobedient to him, she loses her right to maintenance. And the shoes is when the wife disobeys her husband in something that is compulsory. Like if she refused to have relations with him, and we talked about how dangerous that is this morning. For a wife to refuse her husband, that's very dangerous. And we don't have the time to go back over that particular topic, but that's very dangerous. The, the husband is trying to do the right thing. He's gotten married. He has a wife. He's coming home. He's trying to be an upright Muslim. And he's met. He's met with stubbornness and, and rudeness and harshness and meanness. And that can cause the, the devilish whisperings to be amplified. And listen to what I'm saying, brother, it's not an excuse. If a woman acts like that, it's not an excuse to behave poorly. But the point that's being made is that it could cause the devilish whisperings to be amplified to a man. But once the, and I just want to be clear, brothers, once the devilish whispering is amplified, we still have to do what? Still got to do what? Fear Allah. Now my wife is treating me poorly, so I'm going to go do this. No, you got to fear Allah. But the wife, you're putting your husband in a bad spot. You're putting him in a bad mental state. And that's not cool. And we talked about the hadith that the angels, they curse the woman who does that to her husband. And what we talked about this morning is a person may say, well, subhanAllah, the angels curse her for that? Yes, because it's, because it's, it's, it's a serious harm to the husband. There needs to be a serious deterrent for that type of behavior because that can harm 
a man. And his daily routine and his life and his mental. Like if she refused to have relations with him, and again, we clarified this morning that it could be something wrong with your wife. Just want to try to make these, these, you know, these clarifications. It could be something wrong with your wife. She's not feeling good. You, you can't press up on her when she's feeling like that. She's not feeling good. She's not able. That, that's, that's, not, that's not the time to, to say that the angels are cursing you. It's not the time to say that the angels are cursing you. But rather, she's simply unable. Like if she refused to have relations with him, if she refused to move with him to a suitable accommodation, he finds a nice house that's up to her standard. The house, whatever the case may be, and is 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 where she comes from, is suitable for her. She says, No, I don't want to move there. That's disobedience. But notice that the wording is precise. Suitable accommodation. Now that you're trying to take her somewhere that she's not going to feel comfortable, she's not going to feel safe. But if the place is okay and the place is good and she refuses to go, then that's disobedience and maintenance is, the maintenance can be removed. Likewise, if she leaves the house without permission, all of these things are considered disobedience. These are, act, these, are, these are examples of disobedience. She leaves the house without permission. Under such circumstances, she has no right to maintenance because she is considered rebellious. And our sisters, they have to realize that that is not a praiseworthy characteristic, being rebellious. Or always having something to say, or always talking back, or always getting smart. That's not, that's not a praiseworthy characteristic, being rebellious. And likewise, as men, we shouldn't take our wives' opinion as always being rebellious. She might just be, she might just be telling you how she, what she thinks. So it has to be a middle course. She might just be telling you, she might just be saying what she thinks or how she feels. Not necessarily that she's disobeying you or disrespecting you. Sometimes we get sensitive. Everything is not disrespect. Your, your idea really, really might just not be adding up. It might not be a good idea. And you, and you might want to be grateful that your wife is noticing that it's not a good idea. You need to take a step back and think about it. It's not that she's being disrespectful. So a woman shouldn't be rebellious. But likewise, as men, we shouldn't take every form of feedback from our wives as something that's necessarily negative and disrespectful. Your wife, your wife might just see an angle that you don't. So under such circumstances, she has no right to maintenance because she is considered rebellious and he is unable to have pleasurable relations with her. And maintenance is only obligatory when this option is available, meaning that he could benefit from his wife. That's when maintenance is, a, is, is obligatory, when a husband is able to benefit, pl have pleasurable relations. And pleasurable relations is not just met intercourse, just being, having a pleasant environment with his wife. Another way that a woman can lose her maintenance when she travels for her own personal needs, she loses her right to maintenance because she has prevented him from having, from having access to her. And this is not for any reason that involves him, meaning that she's just going to go where she wants to go. Again, he loses access to her. So she loses right to, she loses the right to maintenance. She Fosani continues and he mentions, if the two spouses agree to a certain amount of maintenance, right? And again, that's the, something that we highlighted previously, if the two spouses agree, right, things can be solved amicably. When marriage and things of that nature is normally, connect, normally connected to a person's rights and people can enforce their rights or relinquish their rights. Similar to buying and selling. If someone owes you money, it's well in your right to say, don't worry about it. And it's well in your right to say, I want my money. So when rights are connected to people, 
They have the option to enforce them or to relinquish them. So a lot of times spouses can resolve things amicably by discussing the things that they want to enforce and the things that they want to relinquish. So if the two spouses agree to a certain amount of maintenance or they agree to delay or forward the process, then this is permissible because it, it is their right. That's what needs to be, un- that's what needs to be underlined. Because it is their, it's their right. They can figure it out however they want to figure it out. But if they were to dispute about this, then it is necessary to provide the, this amount at the beginning of every, every day. Meaning whatever amount that they come to. Whatever amount that they come to, they, they begin to bicker. The bickering begins, and now they have to get someone involved. Now there's going to be some type of agreement. The agreement is the amount, and is given to her at the beginning of every day. Moreover, if they agree that this should be made available in lump sums, then that's fine, because the husband may argue that allocating this on a daily basis is inconvenient and burdensome. But again, all of the things that are being mentioned in a nutshell is that the two people can come together and figure out how they want to do it. It is her decision if she's pleased or not to accept this arrangement, and she is not compelled to accept it. It is obligatory that the wife be provided with clothing for the whole year. It is obligatory that the wife be provided with clothing for the whole year, so he issues her with ample yearly clothing. Put a star next to this next one, please. Whoever's husband is absent, this is very important, whoever's husband is absent and does not leave any maintenance behind, meaning he travels or whatever the case may be. Listen to the second scenario, though. Or he's present, but he doesn't support her. It's not that he left or traveled and didn't leave any money behind or anything like that. The next scenario is that he's there, but he's just not supporting her. He's present. He's around, but he's not supporting her. He's not maintaining her. Then he has to reimburse his wife for the prior maintenance, meaning if he's not giving her things and she's buying groceries and she's buying food, she can keep a tab. It's permissible for her to keep a tab and to come at the end of the month and say, I spent $1,500. And she say, I spent 1500 and you should, you know, you should say you should go ahead and give her the what? 1500 But if you can't solve it amicably and somebody gets involved, that's a debt that you owe. It's a debt. It's a valid debt. Because in reality, she's paying for things that, who should be paying for them? You. So it's a debt. And again, that's, that's what I sometimes, you know, that's what I, trying to emphasize, you know, all of us have to learn, but sisters should know that, that if you're spending money, keep a tab, especially if you need the money. Again, it can be solved amicably, and she could do it on the strength. As a woman, she could do it from the kindness of her heart and do it on the strength, if she want to. But if she, don't, she doesn't have it, if, you know, she trying to keep money, she might, I mean, it might be her life savings or whatever the case may be that's dwindling then she will be well in her right to keep a tab. Then he has to reimburse his wife for the prior maintenance because this is an obligation in times of ease and hardship. Sheikh Fauzan is highlighting that you have to take care of your wife whether things are going good or bad, whether you got a job or you laid off. The responsibility don't disappear. Whether you're working, whether you're unemployed, whether you're up, whether you're down, the obligation does not disappear. So if it's a situation where a person is facing some financial restraints, then a tab may begin to accumulate. And again, 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 talking about husband and wife here. So, in the line, inshallah, a woman does it from the strength on the, on the, on the, 
I'm going to help my husband for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's an option. That's a, it's a heavy option and a good option. But we're talking about in scenarios where a woman might not, might, might not be able to do it. And she need her money. She could be a woman that takes care of her family. It's just all types of scenarios. The little money that she has, she may be using it to take care of her mother's hospital bills or her father's hospital bills or her sister might be, you know, going through a rough situation. Got to get her sister a crib. You never know. A woman might need her money for some things that she got to do. It's not that you want to count her pockets and say, my wife got it, we good. No, she might got some stuff she ain't really talking to you about she got to use that money for. Why am I saying that? Because we shouldn't take it personal if she decided to keep a tab. Why are you doing that? Just that and the third, I'm your husband. You know, you give her a whole big hard time and she really just need the money for something that's going on in her life. Because this is an obligation in times of ease and hardship and it does not disappear with the passing of the passing of time. Inshallah ta'ala will stop there and pick back up on some ahadith connected to the topic of maintaining a wife tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala. Hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.